Today I'm going to try and write a physics engine from scratch in Go. And on top of that, I'm going to try and build this with no Google, no ChatGPT, and no friends. Thankfully, you only have to worry about the first two. The only pipeline of thought that should be occurring while I build this thing will be my brain, to my fingers, to my code, and then whatever else happens after that. To give you a baseline of what I know, I've done Unity for a bit, so I have a decent idea of what rigid bodies and collisions are, but I completely forgot to do the like link stuff, so we're gonna be just simulating balls knocking into each other today. In terms of the language we're using and why we're using Go, I did an internship this fall where I used it, and I wanna use it again, so it'll be good practice. So jumping into the projects, I think before we even start coding rigid bodies and like the engine itself, I think we'll need two things. First, we need a way to see our rigid bodies, and I don't really feel like writing my own game engine, so I'll just use a random one that I find online. Second, we need a way to do the vector math, since we're going to be representing the forces of rigid bodies as vectors. This is, I feel, more doable, so we're going to start with that. Alright, so i got a vector file open. First thing I want to do is uh, make a vector. And done. Since we're making a 2D vector, we only need to keep track of the x and y values of this vector. So now for the operations. Some basic ones we definitely need will be adding vectors, subtracting, and multiplying them. But not together, but by a scalar. This is so we could scale our vectors freely. I think a lot of physics, at least simulating it, is finding normal vectors and multiplying them by some calculated scalars. So I think we got the big three right now. Now all that's left to do is to make some helper functions for taking the dot product between two vectors, finding the magnitude of a vector, normalizing a vector, and a function to find the distance between two points since they'll also be represented as vectors. The dot product is huge in physics engines since it helps us calculate the relationship between two vectors. For example, if a ball is moving and it hits a surface, we use the dot product to figure out how much of its velocity is directed along the surface's normal vector. This is critical for simulating bounces or collisions. And boom, we're all done with all the boring vector stuff. Now we can actually dive into making the engine itself. Uh, wait, never mind. we have to make rigid bodies. All right. How do we start this part? So we definitely need to make a rigid body and we're going to give it a position and a velocity, both represented by the vectors we just made. And for now, I think that's good. Okay, now we can get started on the engine. So I think we can make this a struct that holds a bunch of entities, which will be a list of rigid bodies. I know with things like p5.js or whatever, it has a draw and a setup function. So I think I'm gonna copy that sort of ideology. We have a setup function that initializes the entities and an update function that updates the entities in the simulation every some sort of given delta. And how we update the entities is we apply whatever forces that that rigid body is taking and check for any collisions. So before we jump into collisions, let's make a quick test to see if our rigid bodies can actually move and have forces imposed on them. I'm going to make a quick gravity function to add a force of some negative y on each of the entities at every frame and add this to the update function. What this should do is whenever we spawn in a rigid body to our simulation, it should have gravity acted upon it and fall off the screen. Awesome, so we got gravity working. I probably spend an hour trying to figure out why the ball would not drop. If you want to be better at coding than I am and not get stuck on problems like that, I have the perfect solution for you. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is an educational platform where you can learn a bunch of different stuff like math, computer science, and even the super popular AI stuff like neural networks. Problem solving is a critical skill, especially in computer science and programming. With Brilliant, you're not just memorizing and regurgitating, but building real knowledge in real world topics while becoming a better thinker at the same time. Brilliant helps you think like a programmer, giving you the foundational thinking skills needed so you can start writing large-scale projects such as video games and applications. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty busy with school and internships. So Brilliant makes it super easy to squeeze in learning with their mobile experience so I can learn on the go. Whenever I'm diving into a new topic or trying to dust off the brain with some review sessions, Brilliant makes it super easy to learn on the go in just minutes. Brilliant's growing number of programming courses are a great way to build foundations and learn real-world applications. You get familiar with Python easily with their drag-and-drop editor, as well as learn essential coding topics from loops and variables to nesting and conditionals. If you want to uncook yourself, be sure to click the link in the description or use code UKA for a free 30-day trial and a 20% discount on the annual premium subscription. All right, back to the video. So we verified that our rigid bodies can be seen and can have forces imposed on them. But as you can see, if we want them to bump into each other, they don't. This is because we need to implement collision detection and reaction so the balls know if they bumped into something and what to do when bumped. Let's start with the detection part first. Since we're keeping this engine simple, we're going to do the naive way of detecting collisions and only doing one iteration. There's another Another video by Pezzas that visualizes the naive way of collision detection, as well as a less naive way of detecting collisions using grids. We aren't going to dive into that in this video, but if you'd like to dive deeper,
deeper, their video is a good resource. Anyways, what is the naive way of detecting collisions? It's one for every entity in the simulation, we detect if it's colliding with every other entity in the simulation. And if there's a collision, we adjust the velocity accordingly, and do slight positional adjustments to deal with any clipping or overlap. This is then done with every other entity in the simulation. You can see how this is naive, as it's taking every combination of pairs in our simulation, and doing some computation, which would not scale if we had, let's say, a thousand balls simulated at once. But for now, it's good enough. So to implement this, we do the classic double for loop, and check every combination of entity pairs in the simulation if that pair is colliding. If they are colliding, then we want to handle that collision. As we said before, we're going to start with detecting before handling, and instead of doing all the math here, I'm going to add a helper function in the rigid body class to help detect if one rigid body is colliding with another, so it looks something like this. But how do we detect if two rigid bodies are colliding? It's a bit easier for now since we're only working with balls and circles, because detecting a collision between two circles has a clever little math trick associated with it. When trying to see if two circles are touching, all you need are the center positions of the circles and their radii. If the distance between their center points is larger than the sum of their radii, then they are not touching. Otherwise, if the sum of their radii is larger, then they are touching. We can implement this logic with our collides with function, and that's it for detection. Now into handling. This part, I have to admit to you, I had to Google a formula. Unfortunately, I did not pay enough attention to my physics class, so I had no idea how to derive the formula for an elastic collision between two bodies in motion, and we're just gonna implement it. So I took this from the internet. I'm sorry to let you guys down, but at least it's working. And that's a small, easy physics engine in Go. Definitely can add more to it, like adding collision detection for all polygons instead of just circles, adding acceleration instead of just velocity and position, but I'm pretty happy with what I got done. So if you guys want me to add on to this, let me know, and I'll put all the code that I did in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later.